Good day. Hello, everyone out there on the interwebs and the YouTubes. I am Drew with Comics Elite. I am flying Han Solo today. Sean is still out. He had that fight with Doomsday, you know, and he ruptured he ruptured a whole bunch of arteries and veins, you know, and uh, yeah, doctors are trying to put him back together. Hey, it's Doomsday. He does what he does. And Kyle, he's uh, out. I think he's gotten lost in the desert. Uh, he's He's trying to find an ancient hidden uh, temple to learn some martial arts, I think. Trying to get back in shape. I don't know. He's doing what he's... We all have our journey. We all have our own journeys. So it's just me reading all the comics this week. And I read almost I think, 25 to 30 this week. It was a lighter week than last week <clears throat> and a um, relatively more interesting week. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Mez. Then we're going to get to the Skip-Its. And then we're going to get to my picks. So first are the Mez. And I had about seven Mez? Seven Mez this week, which isn't bad. And they're not, it, it, once again, the Mez aren't, they're not terrible. And they're not quite as good as something that I had in my good stack. You know, they're just there. They're on the cusp of being good. But not, and weren't quite bad. So first up, we've got, for my Mez, Superman Red and Blue, number three. Cover is solid good. And this is the first time for me this has been in the mess stack. They've all been skippets because they've all been more or less propaganda. Horrible stories about Superman getting raped and all that. I'm not kidding. Issue number one, Superman is presumed to have gotten raped. Go back and read it. So first story is good. You know, with a, in the second story, with a rewrite and a better artist, it would have been a solid good story. Number three, that's okay. Fourth story. It's called the Fortress of Solitude for a reason. Remember that. Fortress of Solitude for a reason. Uh, so, yeah, that kind of sucked. And fifth story, flipping F, yes. Uh, it's just barely a recommend. Uh, the fifth story by James Stoko is fantastic, but um, it's just there. Oh, my God, it's just there. But it has so much better stuff. But it's first time it's been in the mess, which isn't bad. Next up. Heroes Are Born, number three. Uh, I recommended Heroes Are Born, number two. It was solid good, number three. It's interesting because it mostly focuses on um, this gentleman, the speedster. And he's got an interesting origin. It's pretty cool. He's racing uh, the Scarlet Witch. She's the Scarlet Speedster now. She she got her, her, a silver, I forget, silver Skeeter or something. She took her brother's power speed power so she's a speed witch it's it's crazy it's fun it's wild the backup story with echo kind of sucks it's just like okay you're the phoenix you're locked up and you're deaf but you hear everyone i don't get it i i'm confused it, it's it's mad it's not as fun as the previous issue uh, but eh, it's it's okay it's not bad it's not great meh third one wonder girl number one <clears throat> I love the J. Scott Campbell cover. Damn sexy. And J. Scott Campbell is a legend. Never disrespect his art. Never. Anyone out there. Never do it. And uh, so what I got to say about this one, um, the solid art, the art on the inside by Joel Jones is good. It is damn good. Story and dialogue, it's, it's odd because she's returning home and all the different mythologies are alerted to her return and want to kill her and and there's a sea monster i i i did not get it it's not bad but yeah it's it's strange it's a very strange issue but just because something is strange doesn't mean it's recommendable in my opinion just because it's strange i'm not going to recommend it it's just it's odd it's a very odd issue very odd first issue and number four on the Mez, we got Batman Truth and Justice, number four. Love this cover right here. It's the variant cover, I believe, and it is. Um, this one, this is the first one as well, like Superman Red and Blue, where it's been in my mess, progressed from the skip, it's to the mess. This is the first one of the series that hasn't been propaganda, which is very, very odd. And uh, this one, so the interior art is done by Rob Gilroy. He's... He's a very, it's, it's a very fine, it's it's an interesting art style. You got to get acclimated to it. It's not, it's not terrible, 
It's not great. It's okay. It's it's good in certain stories. Not so much this one. Um, so Jason Todd, Red Hood, his childhood friend is found uh, dead from a, from a supposed drug overdose. And through some investigating, he discovers that Scarecrow is involved. Uh-oh. And this leads to a very good story with Jason dealing with his inner demons. Uh, however, we get more incons inconsistency with Batman's stance on Red Hood and his killing. Uh, but we do get a very interesting twist at the end of this. It's a very interesting twist. And uh, the last page, it's like a, what? Where did this come from? It's completely out of left field. And I'm wondering if that's going to lead to anything in the future or if it's just in this series. Trust me, when you get to that last page, you're going to be like, wait, what? Where did where'd this come from? Um, so I'm, it's, a, it's a meh. It's a meh based on that alone because that last page is just that shocking. It's like, okay, let's see where this goes next. Next up, Flash 770. <clears throat> this would have been a recommend, but there are two big things about this that really pissed me off. Really pissed me off about this comic. But first, the good. Get with that. The, the covers are solid good. Damn good. Um, however, if you look very closely enough on the cover of Brit, by Brett Booth, the variant cover, you'll notice that something is missing. There's something missing on the cover. You look closely. Look closelier. The interior art, beautiful, once again. However, like I said, um, the thing that's missing, are the swastikas. I mean, they're fighting Nazis in this, all right? They're fighting Nazis. They're fighting Hitler. They're going to Germany. They're fighting Nazis. Now, what's missing? The swastikas. You have the flipping, you have the, the eagle, you have the circle, but the circle is empty. There's nothing there. It's like, wait a minute. What's the point of having that emblem there if you're going to have it blank? It's like, why couldn't you just do like the, the S the S thing like they did on the Justice League, the animated series, you know? It, it's so odd. It sticks out like a sore thumb. It's like, really, guys? So you guys can call people Nazis online, but you can't show the actual swastika symbol in your comics? Okay, sure, whatever. Um, another one is, is is the inconsistencies with Jay Garrick, uh, the Golden Age Flash. I know it's, he's supposed to – I don't know if he's supposed to be in his 40s, if he's supposed to be in his 20s. There's a real inconsistency with how old he's supposed to be in this. Uh, the dialogue is terrific in this. Uh, the interactions between the Ray and the Flash are fantastic. And um, But then at the very end, we get Jay being saved by the Ray in a, in a warming and loving lover's embrace at the end. But the only problem is, is that Jay isn't gay. Sorry. I, I don't know if they're trying to rewrite the history, but if you, when you see him being saved at the end, it's like, there's something wrong here. I think they're trying to imply something that isn't um, isn't kosher here. But it's it's a math, you know. Those things really stick out and make they keep it from being a recommend. Sorry. Uh, next up in my mess, we got the uh, Mortal Hulk, Time of Monsters. Uh, <clears throat> another odd read this week. Uh, there's two stories in this. Uh, the first story, I don't know what the hell I just read. I, I really don't. I had to reread it, and um, but after rereading it, it really makes the Hulk seem less special. It really does make him less special. When you have other people that get, are able to Hulk out, it's like, you know, this thing about Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk, you know, in the inner age, it's like, it's, if it's been timeless, you know, it's kind of less special now. But hey, that's just me. The second story, nah, it's okay. I mean, it's a it's a take or it's a it's like an like a throwaway annual issue, pretty much. You don't need to read it. It's not required reading. It's meh. And my last in the mez, Daredevil number thirty. The cover is good. Uh, the story, uh, Mike Murdoch is pre pretending to be his brother Matt in public. Uh, Daredevil has made an offer to commute his sentence, which is crazy. And Electra takes on a sidekick. It's bad and it's very lame. It, 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 there's a reason why sidekicks just don't work in the Marvel Universe. They just don't. It's stupid. It doesn't work. And we we see it play out how it does not work. And, oh, and Bullseye escapes. It it's really feels paced at this point. The series is really feeling paced for the trade paperback. There's a lot of padding going on. 
and a lot of subplots that really don't need to be here and aren't really that interesting. But hey, that's me. You may like those boring side stories, but I'm it's meh. It's not that good. And we are on to the skip. It's the absolute dog crap of the week. And first up for the dog crap of the week is the amazing Spiderman number 66. Covers meh. It's bland and boring. This is one of the more bland and boring Mark Bagley covers he has ever done in his life. It, honestly, you cannot get more bland and boring than that. Stand, standing on a, on a stoplight? Standing? I guess leaning guys knee up. I, I don't know what he's doing. Um, however, the interior art by Bagley is styled good. I'm not complaining about that at all. The interior art is good. The story um, I, I'm going to say is this by the end of this issue, we are now up to at least, at least seven subplots, seven different subplots going on in the amazing Spider-Man series. Why? Can we just get back to a Peter Parker and Mary Jane story? You know, maybe one, maybe two, two subplots. Maybe just get back to um, the the Osborns, you know, and Peter and Mary. You know, two. I, yeah, it, it's too much at this point. And the seventh one is just straight up stupid. Why is this here? Does not need to be here. Let's get back to keep, keep it simple and stupid. Come on, follow the kiss method, guys. Jesus, Hachi Machi. Uh, so as you can see, my blood pressure is steadily rising, but it's not as high as it's going to be. I, I get, like it will be toward the end. Uh, so next up, we have got Shang Chi number one. Oh my word! Um, so in this comic, everyone, everyone in this comic, from Shang Chi. To the kids, people on the street, people in the restaurant, whatever. Bad guys. Everyone talks and acts like a 16-year-old girl who lives on Twitter. I do not find that uh, funny or fun at all. It's not real life. It's There's no verisimilitude with that. And if anyone had read the great Shang-Chi comics from the 80s like I have, which are fantastic, uh, you know that he would never go on a date. Shang-Chi would never go on a date. It does not make any damn sense. Does not follow his character. Oh, and of course, the little girl in this is the hero of the, of the comic book, not Shang-Chi, who, who's actually the title hero of the comic. Not a recommend. This comic sucks. I'm sorry, everyone involved in this comic, you suck. Oh, next up, Nightwing, number 80. So I am, so that makes it three. I am three and out. On Nightwing. I am tapped. The covers are meh. Not great. Not terrible. Interior art is not bad. It's okay. Uh, it's someone uh, mimicking Michael Janin, but it's not bad. Uh, the story, it, the problem, one of the problems with this series is that the, is the tone. The tone of this comic is very bewildering. Is it supposed to be serious? Is it supposed to be comedic? This is supposed to be juvenile. I don't know because we go from cutesy wootsy dog walking scenes to hunting for a serial killer. So Dick Grayson quits being a cop because there were too many criminals. Now, my brother was a cop, and I've lived with co I've lived with cops. I have been neighbors of cops, and I've never heard of a cop quitting because there've been too many criminals. That does not make any damn sense at all whatsoever. That is. Poor excuse as a poor excuse. And then we get one of the more bewildering and dumb interrogation scenes in comics involving uh, Nightwing, Barbara, and two cops who clearly don't know what inter how interrogation works. It, it is stupefying. Uh, it's clear at this point that Tom Taylor is just redoing the Hawkeye series by Matt Fraction with this damn dog edition and the very low stake villains and making the lead character look like a damn idiot. Uh, the couple pages of action do not make up for this very boring, dumb story. Not a recommend. Skip it. Pitch it. Oof, gone. Done. Oh, two to go. Two more skip it. Two more. Okay, next up on my skip it list. Uh, what we got here? Okay, Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, number three. 
Oh, well, this one. The covers are damn good. Not going to lie. Covers are damn good. Uh, interior art is damn good as well. Uh, the story, well, the women in this story are insufferable. Complete see you next Tuesdays. They are complete see you next Tuesdays. I'm sorry. There's no other way around it. And they're this way to the title character who is treated like an absolute piece of shit the whole issue. The title character treated like a piece of shit. It does not make any damn sense. Why? Oh, you had a hard time growing up? Boo flipping who? Cry me a river, grow up, be a goddamn adult, and move forward. That's life. If this isn't character assassination by Cy Sperrier, I don't know what is. I really don't. I mean, Nightwing comes in as a close second to character assassination. But, wow, this one, jeez. Oh, and Elsa Bloodstone is the bestest ever, apparently. She's the bestest ever. If you wanted to read an Elsa Bloodstone, if you wanted to write an Elsa Bloodstone story, Cy Spurrier, write an Elsa Bloodstone story. All right? Yeah. I'm not reading an El I'm not reading Black Knight to read about Elsa Bloodstone. Sorry. This is not a recommend. Screw this comic. Boom. Gone. Done. And the last one, the absolute biggest pile of crap for the week, probably for the year. I know for the month. Fantastic Four, Life Story, the 60s, number one. So there is a summary of this whole comic series in one panel in this issue. Summarized in one panel. This is the actual line of dialogue. I can see I've picked the right man for a bad idea. There you go right there. The bad idea, this comic, the right man, Mark Russell. This was an overly long, unfunny, nihilistic, depressing, and most importantly, a very boring comic. In essence, <clears throat> the 2016 Fantastic Four movie. Yes. I'm comparing this to the 2016 Fantastic Four movie. Oh. This comic is devoid of any type of hope whatsoever. Now, if you want to be depressed with wall-to-wall -wall nihilism to the point of wanting to blow your damn brains out, this is the comic for you. The original concept of the Fantastic Four was four people who don't always get along and function well as a team. That doesn't mean they're all depressed, nihilistic, and hate each other. You'll notice I'm saying nihilistic quite a bit because that's brought up quite a bit in this damn comic. It's not just me. It's this comic. John Byrne, who worked on the series, um, he's a talented guy. Look him up if you don't know him. Said it best. Family and not dysfunctional family is the central key element to the Fantastic Four. It is an absolute, it's, as, it's an absolutely vital dynamic between the characters. End quote. This comic is about breaking this family apart. That's all it's about. One of the key goals of comic book writing is to make an entertaining comic. This was not entertaining at all. Worst comic of the week, probably of the month, most likely of the year. You get nothing, Mark Russell. Good day, sir. Good day. Oh, jeez. Oh, now, onto the good stuff. First up, the good stuff for the week. We got uh, Red Room, number one, by Ed Piscor. Woo! This one. The covers are downright creepy for this. Downright creepy. This is very violent and very graphic. I'm not, I am not exaggerating in the least about that. All the characters are, are, are either depressed, morally ambivalent, or just absolute pieces of total dog shit with no souls in this comic. But, but, if you're into, if, if you're in your late teens or 20s, I can see how you'd like this. It's very much like hostile or any other type of torture porn or like cannibal Holocaust or one of those, uh, or last house on the left, <clears throat> except now it's, it's with the use of Bitcoin. So it's like hostile, but with Bitcoin, I'll weekly recommend this. I'm going to weekly recommend it, uh, to those that get off watching torture porn and love despicable characters. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's intense and dark, and not at all for kids. Not at all. Um, I won't be back for the next one, but I will say this one, it, it's 
it's interesting. It is. I, <clears throat> I was left speechless after reading this. It's it's something. I'll say that. It's something. Number nine, Phantoms of the Scan. Uh, this is another one. The cover is good. Interior art is solid good. Quite terrifying and gross at points. This is a great horror, excuse me, great horror comic series. Not going to lie. I really enjoy this. So the psychics in this series, they discover that they're all sick and they all find out what's killing them. And they all find out that they're all connected in more ways than one. There's a great cliffhanger at the end. I cannot wait to see where the next one goes. This is a recommend. It's a lot of fun. Two issues so far. I'm certain we got issue one here at Comics Elite. Cannot go wrong with that. Number eight, the Ocho, Batman, Fortnite, 0.3. I've got the Jim Lee, Batman, Snake Eyes cover. Uh, once again, this is a two in a row where it's been a recommend for me, which is absolutely shocking because hey, it's a video game comic, more or less. Uh, interior art is solid good. It's not great, not terrible. It's solid good. Uh, the dialogue for the dialogue in the story in this, you know, there's a there's a so there's a mysterious party observing what's going on on the island, and they're commuting back and back and forth about it, communicating back and forth about it. Uh, Batman has become single minded since Catwoman has left. Unfortunately, he's taking out his enemies as quickly as he can to get to the center of the storm and hopefully escape. Oh, we get Batman v Snake Eyes, and it, it kind of goes the way you think it will. Uh, however, the ending, I did not see it coming. Uh, this is a recommend. It's a very fun issue. Uh, check it out. Number seven, The Sumerian Iron Shadows in the Moon. Uh, this series has been a blast so far. This is the true Conan. This is Conan right here. Not Marvel's, right here. This is Conan. Oh, I'm going to release my breath. So much. Oh. Oh, not used to talking as much. It's just me. You can find solo. Covers are fantastic for this issue, and the interior art is beautiful as well. Uh, so Conan and his babe are attempting to hide from their pursuers in this island and decide to stay the night in the, in the ruins as opposed to the forest. However, Conan's babe discovers the statues and the ruins are alive. Bum, bum, bum. So Conan and his babe decide to leave the island at first light but they are quickly found by pirates who come to the island. The fight ensues, and we get a great cliffhanger. This was a lot of fun. It's recommend. It's a very fast-paced, quick action read. Very fun read. Cannot go wrong with this. This is Conan. The Sumerian Iron Shadows of the Moon, number two. Three, number, number six of the week. Catwoman, number 31. The Jenny Frisson cover. This is a very, very beautiful cover. Jenny Frisson, talented artist, love her work. Uh, interior art, once again, beautiful. Selena and Catwoman are looking fucking banging. They are hot as hell in this. Oh, love it. So Catwoman rescues Poison Ivy, but she's only half there. She's only half there. Interesting. Hmm, what does that mean? It's a good story, good mystery. I don't want to spoil anything. It's very much a recommend. This has been an awesome series so far. Ram V is a great writer. Cannot recommend it enough. Number five. Whoa, Star Trek. Holy crap. That's a first time. So <clears throat> let it be known, I'm a Star Trek fan. Sorry, that's the way it is. You might have, probably might have guessed. So this is Star Trek year five, number 20. The covers are good. The covers are okay, you know? Not, not bad, not great, they're meh, they're okay. Interior art is solid, good, and very detailed, down to how the crew looked on the series. <clears throat> so, the crew of the Star Trek, and so uh, this is uh, of the Inter Star Trek Starship Enterprise. This is year five, this is the final year of the original mission. Uh, so the crew beams down to the planet Vulcan to investigate a signal, and by accident, Spock is sent back in time to when Vulcan separatists were fighting with Romulans. And he and Spock learned some interesting uh, left out tidbits of information about the from the history books about his uh, culture, stuff that he didn't know about. Meanwhile, 
ships are attacking the Enterprise during art during the during the current 23rd century that are neither Vulcan or Romulan. They shouldn't really exist. What is going on? Hmm. Very fascinating. We have a shocking cliffhanger, and I cannot wait for the next one. This is a strong recommend. This was a lot of fun. If you love Star Trek, you should be loving, you should be reading the series. You'll love the series. S Spock is written so incredibly well in this. Cannot recommend it enough. Star Trek, year five, number 20. Number four, Legends of the Dark Knight, number one. Derek Robertson on story and art and cover duty right here. I love this cover. All the covers for this have been banging. I love this one. The art by Derek Robertson on the inside is fantastic. <clears throat> so this is the Batman comic I have been waiting for for the last five years. This is the, this is the Batman comic. Uh, it's not Batman sipping the Catwoman. It's not Batman being lectured to by an 18-year-old robot girl. And it's not Bruce Wayne having his fortune taken away because of reparations via the Fox family. This is a traditional, correctly told, action-packed Batman comic that is per that with his rogues. This Batman comic is perfect in every way and a prime example of how you do it right. Uh, Derek Robertson, kudos, sir. You you are the you have gotten him down, Pat. You got it right. Fine, it, it took it took Derek Robertson to get it right. Finally. I love it. Beautiful. You have more common sense and, and traditional storytelling than James Tenyon, Tom King, and Scott Snyder. Kudos, sir. Strongest of recommends. Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number one. Cannot go wrong with this. This is the Batman book right now. <clears throat> number three. Radiant Black. Number four. Holy crap. This series goes into hyperdrive in this issue. This goes places I did not expect it to go. The cover for this is damn. There's like th three covers for this. This is one of the variants. This is damn beautiful. I love it. And a good reflection of what happens in the comic. So holy crap, this story goes where I didn't expect it to go. This is a, this had a complete shocker of an ending. Complete shocking ending. I did not see it coming at all. It is damn good. This issue really ratcheted up the tension, drama, and the action. I loved it. I don't want to spoil anything about this. If you've enjoyed this series, you're going to love it now. Holy crap. It, 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 it takes a wild turn. High recommend. Cannot recommend it enough. You will enjoy this. <clears throat> Take another. Oh, man. What happens when, you're just, when it's just you? Man. Number two for the week. Ultra Mega. Number three. So I had to show Pete here at Comic Slate what happens in this comic. I, I I wanted to show everyone what happens in this comic. I laughed out loud so hard reading this comic. It, this was pure enjoyment beginning to end. Uh, it, it, I, I, words can't begin to describe just how talented James Heron is. He is truly a brilliant master storyteller. All the covers for this are awesome. You cannot go wrong with any of them. This is variant. I think this is the, the second variant, variant B. I love this because, hey, we got one of the Ultra Megas right there on the front cover. So the interior art, once again, James Heron's art is breathtakingly creative and original. It, it is, I, I, this guy's imagination is off the chain. I love it. So if you read the synopsis, so inside they have the synopsis catching you up with what's going on. And if you go from that to reading the first few pages, you should get a good laugh. It is great. Excuse me. I cannot. It is hysterical. Perfect. So our titular young hero is in a kaiju coliseum fighting for his life. Uh, the fights in this are graphic, brutal, and hysterical. Yes, and hysterical. I had to show Pete. He got a great laugh. I got a great laugh. It is terrific. Uh, I love it. I'm literally laughing my ass off over halfway through this comic after what happens to one of the fighters. I, I cannot, it is terrific. <laughs> There's a terrific draw dropping cliffhanger. Did not see it coming. Cannot wait for the next issue. 
This continues to be one of the best, most original and creative comics out today. Uh, so uh, this gets a, uh, I'm dubbing it the Barry Gibb ha, ha, recommend. Yes, ha, ha, recommend. Ultra Mega, number three. <clears throat> What's going to be number one? Whatever could that be? Hmm. Let's find out what is in my stack for the number one pick of the week. Oh, Stray Dogs, number four from Image Comics. This series has been almost perfect in every way. Every issue has been. So this cover right here, this is a, the movie poster variant. I love 70s and 80s uh, Italian horror films. And I love the Dario Argento Demons movies. And this poster homage cover to Demons is terrific. I love it. If you've never seen the movie Demons, check it out. It's an awesome horror movie. Terrific. Dario Argento. Look him up. For you crazy kids out there. So uh, in this issue, we get Earl's origin and understand why he's loyal to his master. It, it is. It makes sense, you know, in a way. I understand why the dog, why, why he did what he did. And um, all I'm going to say is I do not want to spoil anything else about this comic. I can't. But my jaw was dropped over halfway through, and I was weeping like a little bitch at the end. I'm not afraid to say I was re weeping like a bitch. All right, I was. This issue is perfect and terrific. It's gut-riching. It, it, it really tugs at those heartstrings, especially over halfway through and toward the end. It's like twice it gets you. It got me. Trish's, Trish Forstner, friend of, the friend of the store, you know, I, I'm not just kissing her butt. Her art in this is terrific, and it, it is perfect. I, I cannot wait for her to get out here because uh, I'm going to be having her signing comics for days. I'm going to have her doing commissions for days. <laughs> Tony Fleets, he is a terrific writer. This is a terrific miniseries. Uh, it is so well told, well paced, well, the suspense is terrific. Uh, I, I, I just, I expect these guys to go into bigger, bigger, bigger things from here. Uh, so once again, this gets a Barry Gibb. Ha <laughs> ha! Recommend. Pick of the week, Stray Dogs, number four. Number two, Ultra Mega, number three. And number three for the week was Radiant Black, number four. I think those are all Image Comics. All Image Comics. Top three for the week, but Stray Dogs, number four. This is the big dog taking a big bone at the end of the day. All right. So, <clears throat> Sean is out, although he will have his picks for the week eventually. So, once again... Please be sure to type your your like your uh, like number, your pick of the week, what you thought about my picks, and uh, to, so you can enter in a chance to win Sean's picks for the week. It could be Stray Dogs could be in one of his picks. Could, I know Ultra Mega probably will be. I know Radiant Black probably will be. Yeah. So you want to enter a chance to win those picks. And so we 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 do read all the comments. I read all the comments all the time. I love reading. I love engaging with you guys. I love hearing you guys disagree with me. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. So this is going to be a more interesting week because it was just me. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about these picks, in my opinions right now. All right. So please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. It's down there, usually somewhere, usually. And once again, I am Drew with Comics Elite. And please uh, be sure to, uh, what is it what Sean says? Uh, buy what you like, click what you want, and don't listen to the haters, and take care.